Good morning, students. I am Prasant Rao from Aryan Gurukul, your English teacher. I welcome you all to this uh, new version of uh, video classes of English. Let us discuss some grammar parts of English. As you know, much about English grammar in our lower classes. But still, what is the necessity of learning English grammar again? When you were in your lower classes, that was a high. But now you are entering into a new phase of higher education. So, English grammar becomes very much important to improve yourself and to adapt and to adjust with your higher education. So, as we are discussing about grammar, what is grammar? And particularly English grammar. English is a foreign language for us and grammar is the principles to follow to make English correct. So without grammar, we may speak English, but that may be meaningless. So without grammar, any language becomes meaningless. So to make our language meaningful, grammar is important. So, but it is not unknown to us. We have learned so many things, but today it becomes very much important to go through all the knowledge that we have acquired in our lower classes to make it practical. So, we have learned theory, theoretical. Now, we will make it functional. That you can call practical. So, how in a practical way grammar can be used? that we are going to learn in this higher education. And this higher education will ascertain your career to which you are going to enter and make a living of your own. So here the education becomes very much important to you. Whatever you read, whatever you study, whatever you learn, that will be always connected to your future. So, be serious about your learning and use it in a better way and a useful way so that you can get much benefit out of it. Okay, so, as we are discussing about grammar, that is only for the purpose of right language. So when we are talking about language, that is about a sentence. Sentence. So when we form a sentence, there comes some parts. There comes some parts. And those parts are called parts of speech. Okay? So these parts of speech consist maybe any word. give 
दो एन इनकम्प्लीट मीनिंग बट ए मीनिंग एंड क्लॉज क्लॉज इज ऑल्सो ए ग्रुप ऑफ वर्ड्स एंड फ्रेजेस that gives us a complete sense but cannot be called a sentence because that is part of a sentence so this part of speech is consist of word phrase or clause okay so that may be a word that may be a phrase or that may be a clause so under this part of speech there comes eight parts first one is noun second one is pronoun third one is adjective fourth one is verb fifth one is Adverb. Sixth one is preposition. Seventh one is conjunction. Eighth one is interjection. So these eight parts of speech, when combined together. that becomes a sentence not that all the eight parts of speech must be in a sentence okay any of these can make a sentence but the words or the phrases or the clauses used in the sentence for call this maybe noun maybe pronoun maybe adjective maybe verb okay any of these eight parts of speech okay now let us move to the first one that is the noun so under noun under noun the definition of noun is any naming word any naming word is a noun so what do you mean by naming word naming word means anything that has a name so the things around us the people around us the places around us whatever around us that has a name and with that name we identify the thing or the place or the person and the name is called now okay understood so anything that you see that you feel that you see, uh, the touch that will be a noun if it has a name of identification suppose this is a pen this is the shirt this is the cloth this is the board this is the word okay so these are the names the word itself is a noun because with that word we identify this particular thing yes so but here as all the things are nouns they are of different characters they are of different uh, functions they are of uh, different uh, uh, what you can say appearance and uh, characteristics that's why they have been divided into different kinds so under this noun there are kinds and there are kinds under these kinds we have five under these we have five so 1 2 3 4 5 and five. there are five kinds of nouns and the first one is called common noun second one is material noun one is proper fourth one is collective and the fifth one is abstract 
So these are five kinds of noun. And under these types of noun, there are only two. Countable. So let us discuss about these uh, kinds of noun first. So under these kinds of noun, first one is common noun. And how common noun is different from the remaining four, then you will understand how common noun is. So all the common nouns are of the living that means all the living things that you find, they will come under this common noun. And naturals, all the natural things that are, that are created by God will come under this common noun. And apart from this, all the common things, that means commonly named things. The commonly named things will also come under this common noun. So living things, all the living cow, animal, birds, people, all these will come under this common noun. Okay, so we, when identify a man, man is a noun and as it is living that will come under common noun. And all the natures that is not created by man but created by God that will also come under natural though they are non-living. Though they are non-living they will also come under this common noun like mountain, river, tree all these also common nouns though they are natural and some common nouns some common characters okay like book suppose book book is non-living and that is not created by God, but still that has a common name that we name to such a thing if that is commonly understood by people that will also come under common noun. Clear? Okay. So, common noun means living, all natural and common. Okay. And under material noun is quite opposite to this common noun that is non-living Man made will be treated as material noun. Will be treated as material noun. Okay, so anything is that is non living, all the non living things, but here we have seen that uh, some non living will be treated as common. So, some materials will be treated as common, but common nouns cannot be treated as material. Okay, so material nouns can be treated as common noun. So, all the non living and the man made will come under material. So, for example, chair, table, building, okay, all these will come under material noun and gold. All the materials, all the metals, all the non-livings, they will come under material noun. Okay. And under proper noun. Proper noun is, is something different from these two. And both this proper noun is related to common noun and material noun because that is a name of noun. Name of noun, that means if any particular name has been given to the noun to identify, that will be called proper noun. Suppose, here it is boy, it is school, boy is a noun, and if it is Ramesh, so with this name we identify this particular noun. And Ramesh is a proper noun. Okay. So school. School. Suppose it is uh, about uh, 
विद्यालय त्रिवेणी विद्या मंदिर दिस इज द नेम ऑफ द स्कूल एंड विथ दिस नेम वी आइडेंटिफाई दिस पर्टिकुलर नाउन दैट विल बी कॉल्ड प्रॉपर नाउन यस सो यू कैन मेक योर ओन एग्जाम्पल्स एंड यू कैन understand better about this proper noun okay now let us come to collective noun collective noun is a name of a group or collection name of a group or collection is called collective noun so under this collective noun a name of a group suppose it is a group of students that is called class group of soldiers it is called army okay so it is a group of family members that is called family if it is about an association that is called committee so there will be so many people but when they are together the name will be different and we understand by the name to the that particular group that will be called collective noun yes okay and an abstract noun abstract noun is something different so what is the meaning of abstract if you understand then it will be easy to you to understand this better so what do you mean by abstract if you go through the dictionary then you will find abstract is something different the meaning of abstract is something different so from this you can understand from these four abstract is something different so that's why it is called abstract and another come out of from an original if anything has been brought that is called abstract okay so under this we generally know about the names that we can see that we can uh, touch only feelings that means all the feelings all the feelings that we can touch that we cannot uh, even see but feeling as a name that will come under this noun and the two that will be called abstract noun okay so but another way we will understand this abstract noun come out of how it is that is about any word let us take a beautiful Let us take beautiful in white, proud, well, child. Let us take all these words. Then it is beautiful. This is an adjective. In white is a verb. Proud is an adjective. Well is an adverb. A child is a noun. This beautiful. When you find out its noun form, that will be beauty. And beauty is the noun form of beautiful. And this beauty has been derived from this. Uh, a uh, beautiful or abstracted from beauty uh, beautiful so this is called abstract noun okay how simple it is to understand and then this invite so invitation then this proud the noun form of proud is pride well the noun form of well is wellness child child itself is a noun 
and it's uh, another noun form that can be derived, that can be abstracted in childhood. Okay. Hope you understand this from these examples that how a noun form can be formed from those different words that may be an adjective, that may be a verb, that may be adverb or noun. Okay. And the words, those were abstracted from these original words that can be called abstract nouns. Yes. And another thing. Suppose you see, if you take uh, this beauty as original, suppose there may arise one question. Why this beautiful is original? Why not beauty is original? Yes, you are right. That beauty, if you make this beauty original, then this adjective, that beautiful, is the abstract adjective. If this is the noun, this is the abstract adjective. If this is the adjective, this will be the abstract noun. So, there should not be any confusion. Okay, Pele and Yamuti. This is a question like that. Okay, so anda ho ya murgi ho. Lekin anda se murgi ya murgi se anda. Whatever may be, but this is the concept. That how a abstract noun can be formed with an original word. Okay, hope you understand these uh, five kinds of noun. Let us move to types of noun. Under types of noun, we have only two. That is countable and uncountable. And if I ask you what is countable, then your answer will be that can be counted. How easy it is. So what to discuss about this countable and uncountable? You know it very well, I think. That uh, if it is size. First one is countable and second one is uncountable. Okay. So countable, as you know, as you have read in your uh, earlier uh, studies, the countable is uh, that can be counted. But let me ask you one question. Start. Star is countable or uncountable. Let us see. Some say uncountable, some say countable because you cannot count stars. Okay, star or stars. We cannot count. So that may be under this countable, but how? Whether it is countable or uncountable. If you understand, then it will be clear. Okay. But in grammar, countable and uncountable is related to its number. Under number we have two. One is singular, another is plural. Okay. So let us take some examples of singulars and plurals. Okay. Suppose I write here child. There will be children. If I write here leaves, then leaves. If I write here man, then it is man. Okay, we have so many such words, those have both similar and plural. But if I write here rice, there is no plural form of rice. If I write wheat, There is no plural form of wheat. Okay, so here we see and if it is oil, it is similar, it is similar. If it is oil, there is no plural form of oil. Okay, so there are some words, but there is no plural forms. And another, if I write here people, 
What is the singular form of people? There is no singular form of people. Cattle. No singular. Okay. So from these examples, you can understand how they are different. So here you see from these three examples, the child, leaf, and man, though they are both singular and the plural forms, they are called compounds. Okay. So you can make your own definition. What is a compound noun? A noun which has both singular and plural number is called compound. Yes. Okay. Then it is rice and wheat. Though they have no plural forms, they are called uncompounds. And these people and cattle, these are only plurals and no singulars, they are also called uncountable. Okay, but here, as they are only singulars, having no plurals, they are called uncountable singular. And these are called uncountable plural. Okay? Understood? Okay. Now, let us think about this star. Some were talking, some were thinking star is uh, uncountable, but now, let us try. If I write under this uh, singular star, what will be the plural form of star? There will be stars. And according to your definition and our observation, what is derived? That the nouns which are both singular and plural are called countable. So, star is a countable noun. Understood? Okay. So, from this, as you understand about these countables and uncountables, from your observation and studies, you can take any example because nouns are several, nouns are unlimited. So from these uh, abundance of uh, nouns, you can ascertain yourself how they are countable and which are countable and which are uncountable. Okay. So this is about our noun and hope you understand this concept about noun clearly but this is not all about when you practice it regular when you will go through the exercises and practice then only you will be clear and confident about your this knowledge particularly on now thank you thank you very much